Welcome back to this week's episode of my travel diary series. So we're actually getting pretty close to the end of this travel diary series. So I think there's actually only three more episodes to go after this video. So being that this is actually the third last day of the trip and the last day before we head back to Osaka where we'll spend the remainder of the trip before flying back to Melbourne, we actually ended up taking a spur of the moment trip to go to a wine tasting. So the weather on this day of our trip was actually very wet and cloudy. Although to be honest, I think it made the scenery look really amazing. Now this would also be our last day in the countryside for this trip as well, and I really miss these amazing views. So on the way to the wine tasting, we actually ended up stopping off at this really amazing dessert treat store called Hane Chizen. So the reason we actually ended up stopping off at this store was to pick up some gifts for some family members back in Osaka. So there was actually a lot of Halloween themed snacks when we arrived at Hane Chizen and the reason for that is obviously because it was getting pretty close to Halloween. And if you have even the slightest bit of a sweet tooth, I highly recommend seeking this place out. Everything is just so well packaged and presented. Although the main reason that we came in here was to get gifts for family back in Osaka, we just could not help but get something for ourselves as well. Although it was just so hard to pick because everything in here looks absolutely incredible. We ended up getting this treat here, which is actually one of their best sellers. It's kind of like mochi and custard inside of a Danish-like pastry, and it was amazing. It was really, really good. And the smells inside this store were absolutely incredible. And the reason for that is because they actually make everything in here. Now you can also order Christmas cakes from here as well, which Christmas cake is a very popular thing to have here in Japan. So after our little stop off at Hane Chizen, we continued on to our main destination. And even in this really gloomy weather, the countryside here just looks absolutely amazing. And also, sorry for the shaky footage here too, I really need to find a better way to film in the car. And the rain here did also make it really hard to get my camera to focus on my phone. So we ended up arriving at our main stop for the day, which was this amazing mountainside destination for the wine tasting. So this place is actually called Eshikoto in Fukui. And the view here was just absolutely incredible. I really think that the rain and cloudy weather added to the atmosphere here. It was definitely a really good day to come out for a wine tasting.
so they actually do sell some really nice quality sake sets as well which i will say were a little bit on the pricey side but you could tell that the quality was really good Now, the wine tasting at Eshikoto was primarily for Japanese wines, such as rice wine and plum wine. Now, there was actually a really large selection of wines here as well. And the decor here was actually quite classy as well. So they do have kind of like a rotating set of wines that they have tastings for at different occasions. And these were actually the ones that were there for the tasting on this particular day that we went. So when we sat down for the wine tasting, the view where we were was really nice. And the Eshikoto Bureau was right next door. Now they actually also had this magazine that kind of explained a lot about Eshikoto, but my kanji is just not very good, so I really couldn't read any of it or understand anything, so yeah, I don't really have any information to give from that. Now when we got there, I planned to only try three of the wines that they had there for the tasting, but by the time I had finished those three, I ended up trying all of them, because they were really good. So inside this box here was one of the sake from the selection that was actually good to drink hot. They actually pour boiling water into the box and then they leave the sake inside it to heat it up, which was perfect on a day like this. It was a really enjoyable experience and I really liked watching them present each drink. Now, I didn't really feel me actually drinking during the tasting. And the reason for that is because I didn't really know what the rules were like at the time with uploading and consuming alcohol onto YouTube. And I really just didn't want to risk it. Although I did really like everything that I tried, but this Umeshu was the one that I actually enjoyed the most. It was really good. Before we left, my father-in-law actually ended up buying me this bottle of Umeshu or plum wine as a gift. Now this is the same umeshu as the one that I tried during the tasting, but it's just a more concentrated version of it. So you can drink it straight or on the rocks, or you can even mix it. And this bottle looks really nice as well. It's kind of like a teardrop shape. After the tasting, we took one final look at this amazing scenery before heading out to have a big early dinner. Now for dinner, we ended up coming to this really amazing sushi train called Umeza Kaihotsu. Now, I've been to sushi trains before, although I was really shocked at the number of different dishes they had here. Everything here was also really well priced and we ended up eating so many plates. And I filmed a lot of it as well, which is surprising because I usually forget to film the food that I eat. So first up, we ended up having squid, which was really good. And after that, we ended up having this set of three unagi or eel that were all prepared differently. And this one was actually one of my favorites. Now, to be honest, we ordered so much that I really could not keep track of everything. I don't remember what most of these dishes actually were, and I can't really tell just by looking at them. Now, little did I know that when we came here, I would end up trying what is now my 
favorite sushi, which is this one here called Engawa. Now this is actually made from those flat founder fish that have two eyes on one side of the body and they just kind of sit on the floor. This Engawa just melts in your mouth like butter. It was just so good and I highly recommend it. So if you ever see this here on a menu, get it. Now I did also try filming them cutting the fish between plates but every single time I switch my phone on to start filming, they stop to start preparing something else. I always just seem to miss them actually cutting the fish. This set plate here was also really amazing, but I can't really remember everything that was actually on there to be honest. In saying that, everything here was just absolutely incredible. You really can't go wrong no matter what you pick. I even tried sea urchin for the first time here. Now I am the type of person who will try just about anything once, and I usually end up liking it. And from what I've been told about sea urchin, it's meant to be a really acquired taste, and not many people seem to like it that I've spoken to. So it was one of those things that I really didn't think I was actually going to end up liking, but I did really like it. It's definitely nowhere near as bad as what people say it is. It's actually really good, so don't be afraid of it. Now just before we finished up, I did end up ordering another plate of the unagi as well as the engawa, because these two were definitely my favourites. And this was how many plates we ended up eating for dinner. So after the sushi train, we ended up stopping off for an after dinner coffee at Komeda Coffee. Now, coffee in Japan was a little bit of a culture shock to me coming from Australia. So it's actually really common in Japan to have coffee after breakfast or dinner as kind of like a dessert. Whereas in Australia, we more just have coffee with breakfast, which my wife's parents did think was a little bit odd that I would have coffee with my breakfast rather than after it. Now, it was pretty busy at Komeda Coffee, so I didn't end up filming a whole lot, but it did have a really nice atmosphere in there. And this actually brings us to the end of this week's episode of my travel diary. I really hope that you enjoyed this episode, even though it was just a spur of the moment day out, it ended up being a really amazing day. I would really like to hear your thoughts and opinions on today's video in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please help support this channel by hitting that like button and subscribing if you haven't already. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, in next week's episode, we will be leaving Fukui for Osaka, where we'll actually be spending the remainder of the trip. Now, for the first day in Osaka, we ended up looking at a display home before heading out for a really nice meal. So I did end up filming the display home as well as kind of like another little house tour video so I hope you look forward to that. That first day back in Osaka is just going to be a pretty short day and that's pretty much just because of the drive there. But I do really hope that you look forward to next week's episode and I hope to see you all then. Bye for now.